Chapter Two of Nutcracker and Mouse King by E. T. A. Hoffman. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Gifts. Kind reader or listener, whatever may be your name, whether Frank, Robert, Henry, Anna, or Maria, I beg you to call to mind the table covered with your last Christmas gifts as in their newest gloss they first appeared to your delighted vision. You will then be able to imagine the astonishment of the children as they stood with sparkling eyes, unable to utter a word for joy at the sight before them. At last Maria called out with a deep sigh, Ah, oh, how beautiful! Ah, oh, how beautiful! and Frederick gave two or three leaps in the air, higher than he had ever done before. The children must have been very obedient and good children during the past year, for never on any Christmas Eve before had so many beautiful things been given to them. A tall fir tree stood in the middle of the room, covered with gold and silver apples, while sugar almonds, comfits, lemon drops, and every kind of confectionery hung like buds and blossoms upon all its branches. But the greatest beauty about this wonderful tree was the many little lights that sparkled amid its dark boughs, which like stars illuminated its treasures, or like friendly eyes seemed to invite the children to partake of its blossoms and fruit. The table under the tree shone and flushed with a thousand different colours. Ah, oh, what beautiful things were there! Who can describe them? Maria spied the prettiest dolls, a tea set, all kinds of nice little furniture, and what eclipsed all the rest, a silk dress, tastefully ornamented with gay ribbons, which hung upon a frame before her eyes, so that she could view it on every side. This she did too, and exclaimed over and over again, Ah, the sweet! Ah, the dear, dear frock! And may I put it on? Yes, yes, may I really, though, wear it? In the meanwhile, Fred had been galloping round and round the room, trying his new bay horse, which, true enough, he had found fastened by its bridle to the table. Dismounting again, he said it was a wild creature, but that was nothing. He would soon break him. He then reviewed his new regiment of hussars, who were very elegantly arrayed in red and gold, and carried silver weapons and rode upon such bright shining horses, that you would almost believe these were of pure silver also. The children had now become somewhat more composed and turned to the picture books, which lay open on the table, where all kinds of beautiful flowers and gaily dressed people and boys and girls at play were painted as natural as if they were alive. Yes, the children had just turned to these singular books, when, cling ling cling ling the bell was heard again. They knew that Godfather Drosselmeyer was now about to display his Christmas gift and ran towards a table that stood against the wall, covered by a curtain reaching from the ceiling to the floor. The curtain behind which he had remained so long concealed was quickly drawn aside and what saw the children then? Upon a green meadow, spangled with flowers, stood a noble castle, with clear glass windows and golden turrets. A musical clock began to play when the doors and windows flew open, and little men and women with feathers in their hats and long flowing trains were seen sauntering about in the rooms. In the middle hall, which seemed as if it were all on fire, so many little tapers were burning in silver chandeliers, there were children in white frocks and green jackets dancing to the sound of the music. A man in an emerald green cloak at intervals put his head out of the window, nodded, 
and then disappeared and godfather drosselmeyer himself only that he wasn't much bigger than papa's thumb came now and then to the door of the castle looked about him and then went in again fred with his arms resting upon the table gazed at the beautiful castle and the little walking and dancing figures and then said godfather drosselmeyer let me go into your castle the counsellor gave him to understand that that could not be done and he was right for it was foolish in fred to wish to go into a castle which with all its golden turrets was not as high as his head fred saw that likewise himself after a while as the men and women kept walking back and forth and the children danced and the emerald man looked out at his window and godfather drosselmeyer came to the door and all without the least change fred called out impatiently godfather drosselmeyer come out this time at the other door that can never be dear fred said the counsellor well then continued fred let the green man who peeps out at the window walk about with the rest and that can never be rejoined the counsellor then the children must come down cried fred i want to see them nearer all that can never be i say replied the counsellor a little out of humour as the mechanism is made so it must remain so cried fred in a drawling tone all that can never be listen godfather drosselmeyer if your little dressed-up figures in the castle there can do nothing else but always the same thing they are not good for much and i care very little about them no give me my hussars who can manoeuvre backward and forward as i order them and are not shut up in a house with this he darted towards a large table drew up his regiment upon their silver horses and let them trot and gallop and cut and slash to his heart's content maria also had softly stolen away for she too was soon tired of the sauntering and dancing puppets in the castle but as she was very amiable and good she did not wish it to be observed so plainly in her as it was in her brother fred counsellor drosselmeyer turned to the parents and said somewhat angrily an ingenious work like this was not made for stupid children i will put up my castle again and carry it home but their mother now stepped forward and desired to see the secret mechanism and curious works by which the little figures were set in motion the counsellor took it all apart and then put it together again while he was employed in this manner he became good-natured once more and gave the children some nice brown men and women with gilt faces hands and feet they were all made of sweet thorn and smelt like gingerbread at which frederick and maria were greatly delighted at her mother's request the elder sister louise had put on the new dress which had been given to her and she looked most charmingly in it but maria when it came to her turn thought she would like to look at hers a while longer as it hung this was readily permitted end of chapter two